the next generation for transportation. For the next generation. That's what federal and state officials had to say about the historic test run of high-speed rail in Illinois Friday. An Amtrak train from Joliet's Normal got up to speeds of 111 miles per hour. The project, which is part of a $2 billion federal and state investment, also includes an announcement of a $325 million multi-state deal to design, build, and deliver 130 bi-level passenger rail cars in Illinois to be used in California and the Midwest, including the Chicago to St. Louis corridor. Just a test segment will be more 110 mile an hour service to come. And remember our passengers, those thousands and thousands of Amtrak passengers, remember ridership up 11% on this corridor just in the last 12 months, they'll enjoy these 110 mile an hour speeds routinely starting next month. State and federal officials, alongside members of the media, rode an Amtrak train from Joliet to Normal. A 15-mile stretch of that trip, the train went an average of 110 miles per hour. Before leaving the station in Joliet, Governor Pat Quinn, Federal Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood, and U.S. Senator Dick Durbin spoke about the history and the future of high-speed rail. What we want to do today is show the people of Illinois, the people of America, what we can do right here in the Midwest at connecting people from one city to another with a fast train. And it took a lot of team efforts, and it really starts with our federal government and a man from Illinois, our own Secretary of Transportation. He knows transportation like the back of his hand, and he's with us here today. It's an honor to be on this trip with him, and that's Secretary Ray LaHood. Ray, take it from there. Good morning, everybody. I guess we're supposed to be quick here, so I'm not going to uh, do a lot of gibberish. I'm going to actually read my comments. Uh, standing here in Illinois, I can't help but invoke the vision and perseverance of one of our nation's greatest heroes, Abraham Lincoln. As most of you know, our 16th president had a bold vision for American Rail. When Lincoln first talked about building the Transcontinental Railroad, the critics and naysayers told him no. In a time of crisis and uncertainty, some believed that investing in our future was simply not a good idea. But Lincoln knew better. He knew that America's future was bright, but only if we choose to invest in it. He knew that in order to be the most powerful economy in the world, we would need a modern transportation system that would connect us from coast to coast. That's why 150 years ago, he signed the Pacific Railway Act of 1862, laying the groundwork for one of the greatest transportation projects in history. Today, our president, President Obama, has the same kind of vision for rail, but this one is designed for success in the 21st century. Across the country, we're investing in modern rail networks that will help our economy grow, and I've already helped our economy, economy grow. Our plan calls for increasing the speed and frequency of service, improving reliability, and providing growing populations with alternatives to rush hour gridlock and overburdened airports. We've invested $2.5 billion to achieve that vision right here in the Midwest, the lion's share of it in Illinois. And I want to say a big word of thanks to our best partner in the Midwest, Governor Pat Quinn. Pat, you've been a great partner. We could not have done this without you. And I also want to thank my friend and former colleague that I served with in Congress, Dick Durbin. He pushed this, he helped us with this, and he's been a real innovator on this too. As today's demonstration shows, we're well on our way to achieving the President's vision. By 2050, the population of the Midwest is expected to grow by 30 percent. Local leaders know this, and that's why they're working with us to connect the region's 40 largest cities with the higher performing inner city passenger rail. In the coming weeks, passenger trains on the Chicago St. Louis corridor will reach speeds of 110 miles an hour between Dwight and Pontiac. This is only the beginning. By 2015, 110 miles per hour service will be expanded throughout nearly 75 percent of the corridor. Over the long term, we hope to double the number of round trips and reduce the trip time to three hours, 49 minutes. But it's not just about faster trains. We are thrilled to see a new multimodal transportation facility 
which many of you were here to break ground on in Joliet. Stations are coming to Springfield, Alton, Carlinville, Pontiac, and Dwight. Building and modernizing train stations has been a huge priority for DOT. Experience tells us these stations are magnets for economic development, and they create jobs for the people who will build these facilities. But let me say this, what we're celebrating here is the next generation of transportation for the next generation. That's President Obama's vision. That's what he's been about. And that's what this kind of new high-speed rail in Illinois is all about. Congratulations to everybody who has been a big, big part of this. We're grateful for your support. We have put Illinois on the map for the next generation of transportation for the next generation. Thank you. All right, well said there, Ray. Well, we wouldn't do it without Ray LaHood. He's been our constant partner and uh, supporter. And you have to have somebody in the Congress, in the U.S. Senate, who is a strong voice for rail transportation, who understands what we can do with high speed. And that's exactly what Senator Dick Durbin has been. From day one, he's been a fighter for high speed rail. Come on forward, Senator. Thanks a lot, Pat. Thank you a lot, Governor Pat Quinn. Folks, I've got railroads in my blood. Born and raised in East St. Louis, Illinois, my mother, my father, my two brothers and I all worked for the New York Central Railroad. I grew up with railroads. I believe in railroads. When I was elected to the United States House of Representatives and to the Senate, I never gave up on the dream that America could modernize its passenger rail transportation system and rival the countries all around the world that were still committed. But it was only a dream until President Barack Obama was elected and he made a personal commitment to the high-speed rail projects that we are honoring today. That was a turning point. Fortunately for us, we had a Secretary of Transportation in Ray LaHood who knew how to find Illinois and who got plenty of phone calls when it came time uh, to allocate the money. As governors all around the country decided in their Tea Party uh, loyalty oaths to give up on passenger rail, we called Ray LaHood and said, we'll take the money in Illinois. And we did. Now those governors can stand by as a 110-mile train goes by and wave at it if they'd like. They can be our guest. And I think the, the lesson here is really basic. For those who don't believe that President Obama's stimulus package created jobs, economic development, and an infrastructure, infrastructure for the 21st century, get on the train. For those who think that rail service is yesterday and not tomorrow, get on this train. And for those who don't believe that we can come together as a nation and build an infrastructure to serve us for years to come, get on this train. For all others, step back. It's coming at you fast at 110 miles an hour. Wave as we go by. Thanks a lot. During the test run, two different cabins were set up with speedometers hooked up to GPS units so passengers could see the progression of the train on a map, plus the moments where the train reached the historic threshold of 110 miles per hour. Alright, here we go, Larry. Here we go. 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 Governor Pat Quinn, Federal Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood, and U.S. Senator Dick Durbin visited the media and the aisle of a moving rail car. They talk about the historic nature of the test and also the economics and politics of high-speed rail. It really was a culmination of a lot of hard work, and it's just the beginning. This is uh, going to expand all across Illinois and across mid-America. Uh, so, Secretary LaHood was talking a little bit earlier about the need for additional high-speed rail funding at the federal level. Mm -hmm. um, and refresh our memory on the state transportation budget, what's in there? Or well, we have it in our capital bill. Uh, okay. We were able to get uh, money for high-speed rail in that bill, and uh, I think we can continue to keep, keep the investment going. This has created thousands of jobs just doing the high-speed rail. But then with these train stations, uh, we left Joliet, we're on our way to normal. Uh, there's a lot of new train stations along the way, and that creates economic development on the route. Here's Senator Durbin, and we were just talking about how the train stations uh, emanate economic growth as well on a fa fast train. 
Secretary LaHood, can you um, put in perspective where Illinois re is uh, relative to other states, other countries when it comes to high-speed rail? Give us an assessment. Uh, we're one of the leaders, thanks to uh, the leadership of uh, Governor Quinn and uh, Senator Durbin, and thanks to the vision of President Obama. We wouldn't, four years ago, we were nowhere. Illinois and the country was a wasteland when it came to high-speed rail. As soon as President Obama put this in the stimulus bill, people like Senator Durbin voted for it, pushed for it. Eight billion dollars is eight billion times more than this country has ever invested in high-speed rail. And Illinois is third when it comes to the amount of money. California's number one with over three billion dollars. The Northeast Corridor is second and Illinois is third with over two billion dollars thanks to the leadership of the governor. And this is a dream come true today. Not only for the workers that built these tracks that now deliver trains at 110 miles an hour and will on 75% of this track, but for the people that will ride this train. Think of the thousands of students who come from the Chicago suburban area that go to ISU, that go to Knox College, that go to uh, uh, U of I in Springfield, that go to Southern Illinois, Illinois University. Think of, think of the fact that they can't afford a car, and this is the best transportation. This is a, what I said in Joliet is absolutely the vision that the president has had. This is the next generation of transportation for the next generation. And if you look in the summary, uh, I think it was provided by the Department of Transportation, State Department. Uh, there's a million dollars for design or planning study of double tracking. Is that somewhere realistically in the next few years? Uh, Look, at we're, we, round of funding? part of what we do is take our cues from the leadership in the states. We have a great leader in California. Governor Brown has really stepped up, and also a state that's hurting financially. Governor Quinn stepped up. A Republican governor in Michigan stepped up. We just gave Governor Snyder two years ago a billion dollars to fix up the tracks for faster trains from Detroit to Chicago. What a connection. And then all along the Northeast Corridor, we've got governors. So the answer is we take our cues from the states. Governor, and, double tracking? Uh, we're very interested in that, and we're also interested in Chicago to Detroit. That's uh, within the realm of possibility in a short period of time. And uh, I think what Senator Durbin has done in Washington is make sure that all of his colleagues understand that this investment in rail pays great dividends and jobs, and you might talk about that, Senator. Well, I can just tell you that the problem in Washington, as Secretary LaHood knows, is there is a faction in Congress that believes in zero funding for Amtrak. Zero. I'm not talking about reduced. I'm talking about zero. And when we talk about enhancing Amtrak to meet the growing demand for passenger rail, they don't pay any attention to it at all. We have just got to work through them and show on a bipartisan basis nationally that this is a winner. It's a winner for jobs, it's a winner for job creation, it's a winner for colleges and universities. Uh, the second busiest station in Illinois on Amtrak is the next one we're going to, Bloomington Normal, the second busiest. And over in uh, the Galesburg area, in Macomb area I should say, the additional Amtrak service has led to a reduction of student-owned automobiles of 40%. These kids are saving money now. They don't have to buy a car. They can rely on Amtrak to get back and forth from Chicago to school. Another thing is, uh, you take a look at all the tablets, the laptops, the Wi-Fi that we're going to have on these trains. You know, it's a very good way to be productive if you have to travel from one place to the next, whether you're a student or a business person. And that, that's what we want to do, is make our transportation as balanced as possible. A fast train from Chicago to St. Louis is going to revolutionize every part of the uh, route uh, from Chicago to, to uh, St. Louis. This is 15 Governor, miles today. Governor, we're going to head back gonna, to our seats. So this will be the last question. How are you question? going to get up to 70% uh, of this route by, 50, by 2015? That's our goal, 75. What, what, what's the budget have to get there? With, get I think we the have reality. the resources already for that. It's just actually implementing and investing the money. We hope by 2015 that 75% of this route is at 110. That would be quite an achievement, and it will cut off the trip uh, by about an hour's time. And uh, these are going to be brand new rail cars coming, too, that are made in Illinois. In Rochelle, Illinois, they're going to be made, and these will be 21st century rail cars that I think will enhance the trip and enhance the passenger ridership. 
the more we drive up the passenger ridership, the more we can invest. By the way, the cars that are being built in Rochelle will also be sold in California and in the Northeast Corridor. This, this is a bonanza for Illinois. And it wouldn't be happening if we didn't have high-speed rail, if we didn't have the opportunity, a company would not be locating here. And they know that there's going to be a lot of business here, but there's going to be a lot of business from California and from the Northeast Corridor. So the spinoff of this train we're riding on is in Rochelle, Illinois, and, and the jobs are also there. And Ray, you know, not only is it those who are making the rail cars, but the suppliers exactly. that uh, work for this company, many, many subcontractors, they're all coming to Rochelle. And we want to continue that. We want to be the rail manufacturing capital of the country. And uh, Illinois did that before, and we're going to do it again. The goal is to increase the 110 mile per hour service along nearly 75% of the Chicago to St. Louis corridor by 2015. Officials say the high speeds will reduce travel time by more than an hour. Ridership among Amtrak's four Illinois routes has grown nearly three quarters in the past six years with more than 2.1 million passengers last year. As for the future of rail traffic through Springfield, Senator Dick Durbin says that he believes by the end of the year Springfield will be able to resolve its issue and come to a consensus on the 10th Street approach. And then the next step is to secure federal funds to make it happen in the next few years. Until next time for Podium, I'm Greg Bishop. Thanks again. Thanks for riding with us. This again is Pontiac. We're en route to our station stop at the Uptown Station in the town of Norwood.